Have you ever wondered what you could do with your imperfections? Or if these could be something that you could use to work to your advantage? So this is something that we're talking about today, embracing your imperfections. And I'm taking this from the book, um, The Inner Game by Matthew Brown, 12 Principles for High Impact Entrepreneurs. Let's start with a quote. It says here, a diamond with flaws is, is better and more valuable than a pebble without imperfections. In other words, um, you can sell a diamond at a much higher value with its flaws unrefined than you could uh, sell a pebble refined without imperfections. So the key lessons that I want to share with you from this book um, are one, number one, um, do not wait to have a perfect product before you can start your business or launch it into the market. Uh, Ray, number two, Ray Dorfman says, if you are not embarrassed by your product, by the time you take it to the market, that is, you have launched the product too late. Number three, in other words, the speed, the, the, the most important thing is the speed through which you take something to the market. So speed to the market is more impo important than perfection. But remember, this is not a justification for you to take poor quality products to the market. Number four, if you are introducing a new product, you can start with what they call a minimum viable product, MVP. A minimum viable product is a technique in which you introduce a new product to the market with just basic features um, and basic features that are essentially able to get the attention of the consumers that will use your product. The reason for this is simple. You don't, you want to release your final product after you get sufficient feedback from your customers, which are the real users of your product. Number five, once you get your product into the market, you can now start working on perfecting your product from the feedback that you're getting from the real users of your product. This is very important. Why is this very important? Because sometimes we feel, you know, you make a product and you feel this is a perfect product. It works for you, but does it work for your consumers? Or even if it's a service, it may look good for you. The process might look perfect for you, but does it work for your, uh, for your consumers? Number six, people resonate with imperfections more than they do with perfection. Number seven, let's give examples so that we can bring this home a little bit. Number one, the smash burgers that you get from Roko Mamas, if anyone has ever tested them or have ever seen the pictures of these burgers, you would have noticed that um, the burgers that you get this week and the burger that you get next week does not look the same. Um, and don't we like these burgers? We do. And the reason, the reason for this is that the owner says um, the imperfection in this product, the smash burgers is what makes the product unique and people sort of resonate with this and um at one point when he was doing like a, a photo shoot for marketing the photographer was was concerned with you know the realness of the pictures and you know how people would would respond to that but the owner was like no we want to get this out as it is because this is exactly what would resonate with uh, the consumers number two the second example that is so they they wake up at uh weavers in part uh, in, in in the past in um iran and these guys would take about 14 months to make a carpet that's over a year right and when they come to the end of making this carpet they would deliberately take out some stitches from this carpet why would they do that because their fundamental traditional beliefs or cultural beliefs were that only God can be perfect. No one else can be perfect. So if that is the case, they believe that um, their products also should not be perfect. So that is the reason why they would take out some stitches from, uh, from their product. And what happened years later when machines you know, started coming in and the process was now automated, someone decided to do a test on this. So they 
made the perfect carpets with the machines and they made the imperfect uh, carpets where they took out some stitches. And guess what? 95% of the people that were asked to choose went for the imperfect carpets, which is those ones that had missing stitches, which again takes us back to that point where we say people resonate well with imperfections, right? Because we also recognize internally that we are not we are not perfect. So what are the takeout points from this? Number one, find your imperfections and think about how you can use them to your advantage. Let me give you a personal example here before you get confused about what we're talking about. So in real life, I'm a very shy person, but I am very strong um, on online. So my online presence is very strong. I make my connections, most of my connections, I make my connections online and I network very well online before I meet people uh, in real life. So you're listening to me now and you're thinking, well, this person can be shy. Well, you probably won't tell it because I hide it very well and you can't see my face right now. So you probably won't be able to tell if I'm shy or not. But this is an imperfection of myself being shy and not so going out. Um, basically as an introvert, but I use this in another way, right? So I'm doing this show online and you're all happy with it, hopefully. Um, but I'm sort of making use of my imperfection for a greater good. I probably wouldn't have done this, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in an auditorium with thousands of people. Probably I would, but, you know, I'm making use of my imperfection right now. And that is what I'm trying to tell you about to say, find your own imperfections and see how you can use them to your advantage or for your own growth. The takeout point number two is, of course, um, there are no excuses for taking poor quality products to your consumers in the name of I'm taking an MVP product to my consumers. Make sure that your MVP is of quality, even though it has your basic features. Number three, the takeout point is that we need to embrace our imperfections, right? This is the final conclusion of the matter. We need to embrace our imperfections. Find a way of making sure that your imperfections work to your advantage. So that's the end of our first segment where we are talking about um, imperfections.